Welcome to the Time Has Come podcast. My name is Graham Wardle, and today I have my old friend Amber Marshall back on the show. In this episode, we talk about her upcoming season of Heartland, her latest creative venture, Marshall's Country Store, and also how she's managed to deepen her appreciation and contentment for life. I really enjoyed hanging out with her and spending some time on her farm and just getting to know her better. The time has come for us all to welcome Amber Marshall back on the show. You ready? Yeah. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Time Has Come podcast. I'm joined again by Amber Marshall. We're in Amber Marshall's neck of the woods now, so thank you, Amber, for having us. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for joining me here. Yes, it's awesome to be here. It's very peaceful, very um, relaxed, and um, your magic painting word, mm-hmm. your feeling that you love to feel, is contentment. Mm-hmm. Do you feel content in this area? Well, how can you not? <laughs> like, really. And I think that not a lot of people get the opportunity to be in a place like this and live here. Yeah. You know, they, they go and they want to experience it for the day, but then they have to go back to the hustle and bustle of life. And yeah. for me, I think contentment is so important to my everyday life that I wanted to live where I feel the most content. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Here we are in, in the Mother Nature. We used to mm-hmm. call Amber Mother Nature back on set and when we first started because Amber was always out. Like, we'd be like, where'd Amber go? And she'd be going playing with the animals out in nature, picking rocks and playing with Wandering bugs. Wandering around, <laughs> yes. So, Amber, the last time we chatted was January of 2021, mm-hmm. and some things have changed since then. Yes. The world has changed. So how has Amber Marshall changed over the last 18 months? You know, it's funny. I think that I've changed less than a lot of people during this time because my life hasn't really changed. I mean, look around. You know, there's there's really nothing to to stop me from living my everyday life. And uh, I think that being out in nature, you have a grounding that comes with that, right? Mm -hmm. You're just out with what makes you feel the things that I think we're supposed to feel as Mm. opposed to when you're in the city and there's all of these rules and things that come into effect, you feel like you have to obey them or abide by them because you're all in this small area together. Whereas out here, I mean, it's, it is what it is. And my life really didn't change at all. So I don't know that I have really changed. What have you learned? Have you learned anything over these last 18 months? Maybe about life and or the society at large? I, I've learned a lot about the people around me. I think mm. that that is primarily what these last two years have taught me, is that people are all wired differently. We all think differently. And I think that's why some people love the city. Some people love the country Mm -hmm. because there are, I have friends that live in the city and they love it. And they say, how can you live out there? You know, there's so much work and you have to cut the grass all the time. And you have to, like there's there's all (laughs) these chores. chores. (laughs) And to me, I think the the opposite. I think, how do you live in town? You must be so bored. Like what is there to do? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a different mindset. But in these last couple of years, when we were in a way isolated, you didn't feel that out here. Mm. I, I don't feel isolated out here. I never have. I feel right. the opposite. I feel very free and very just, it's peaceful. I feel contentment like yeah, we talked yeah, about. Yeah. And so when everyone went into lockdowns and masking and all this, I didn't have to do that. I'm out here. I mean, yeah. nobody's telling me what to do. Nobody's saying you need to do this. You need to. And so I can't say that my life changed at all. And to go back to asking how the world kind of changed and what that what I learned from that I think that it's so important to stay true to who you are in your own beliefs because I think there was a lot of people that were pressured into something that they didn't want to do they didn't believe in Mm. and I don't agree with that but I also understand that when there's a lot of fear in the world yeah and if you don't understand that fear then you're gonna just do whatever you think is right and that's usually what people are telling you if you don't know yourself yeah and so for myself I I just kind of went you know there's a lot of fear that's unnecessary and I'm just gonna keep my distance and enjoy my life here and Mm -hmm. I don't need to be a part of that Mm -hmm. so I think what I learned was just staying true to yourself is so important and Mm -hmm. to your knowing what your core values are and beliefs are and not allowing someone else to tell you what they are yeah, and I think that's where fear comes in. When you're scared, you move into that fight or flight thing, mm-hmm. and you want someone to tell you what's where you should go. It's the exact you know, same what horses. you should do. Yeah. What do you think a join up is? You know, you have these horses that are maybe terrified of people. You take a horse, let's say, out of the wild. Horses never seen people before. You put them in a round pen, 
and all they want to do, you look at all their signs, all they want to do is escape. Their eyes are wide, they're looking uh. to the outside, they're running around as fast as they can. You're sending them out, and there's a point when they finally say, I'm scared, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything about this, I'm going to soften and give myself to you. Please just tell me what to do. And there's that moment when you're running a horse around and you'll see it, their head's turned out, their eyes are wide, they're running around, they're scared. Then they finally say, please, I'm tired, tell me what to do. Mm. And I think that's the same, like, I mean, animals and people are, they're on the same page of instinctual. We have an animal nature. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's what happened. It was these people that were running around and, and I'm going to compare this to animals because that's just what that's I know. What you do, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the same philosophy of, of a, a horse's mind to a person's mind. And they're saying, I'm trapped, I'm scared, I can't get out, tell me what to do. Mm. And then they soften and they just follow who that leader is. But if you don't have the right leader, that's also... Or they have an uh, ulterior agenda that maybe is not in your best interest. That's, that can be very harmful. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the situation is, you can always control with fear, for the most part. Yeah. And there's some horses that they are very centered and grounded and they will come in on their own terms and they're not going to say okay i give up and it's the same with people you know there's there's people that are yeah they can fall into that and and move in that way too do you find did you find some of your friends most of your friends were out in the country though Mm -hmm. are they do you have any friends that are in the city that moved out to the country that were like i've had enough of this i do know i see it's funny i've over the years i think that you gravitate towards people who are very similar in the way you like to live your life yeah so i can't say that i have a lot of friends that live in the city but the friends i did have in the city wanted to be out in the country as soon as this hit they were like you know what i just this is enough i'm feeling trapped i just want to be out and so i had a lot of people that would come out and just hang out here for the day yeah and be like yeah i just need to get away from all of that yeah that's what i found is that over these past uh, 18 months I've always wanted to live on land and have a garden and, and just sort of like very similar to your style, but probably not with so many animals because it's, it's, it's a lot of work. But um, but even more so now, it's just like, oh, yeah, like I don't need all this stuff. I think it'd be really wise. I just feel this like urge in my being of like grow your own food, be mm-hmm. self-sustainable. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling that more and more with the people I talk to and the people I gravitate towards to now, it's like, over these last 18 months, I found, oh, I gravitate way more towards these people. Mm-hmm. Now, you've always been mm-hmm. this way, but I'm finding it's, it's shifted in me, my value system, and what's a priority for me. And I think a lot of people in the world right now are going like, yeah, like, this is not great. Like, yeah, the city, and there's like stuff happening, and there's always activities and such. But really, when it comes down to it, I want good people, mm-hmm. food, shelter, and like, friends around me you know like basic needs as a human you know we need to have people around us that lift us up yeah as opposed to people that bring in a negative energy or an energy that doesn't match ours because i'm not saying that (laughs) if you live in the city you have a negative energy yeah yeah yeah. no 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 what i'm saying but you have to match your energy in order to be content Mm. so if you're and i know i do know people that they thrive off um not just excitement, but that kind of adrenaline rush yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and just the fast paced life. And I thrive and the way I recharge is by this, by mm-hmm. walking out by myself. My favorite thing to do is just go after work, sit in a field like this by myself and just take it all in. And that's how I recharge my batteries. But there are people and I'm friends with people that they need to be right downtown and go out to, you know, a happening club and that kind of thing to feel themselves Mm. and so i think that that's that's just where everybody's on their own journey everybody's on their own journey yeah yeah let's talk about um amy for a bit let's talk about amy's journey in season 16 you're in the middle of filming season 16 Mm -hmm. right now can you share with everybody what's amy's inner journey her her spiritual evolution for season for season 16 I think. (laughs) (laughs) Can you give everyone a sneak peek? Because I know probably there's a lot of Heartland uh, fans watching the show. So Mm -hmm. um, do you have any insights for everybody about what's Amy's journey? I think fans have been, they've kind of been on this emotional roller coaster with Amy for the last few years. Because as you know, Ty's departure Mm -hmm. caused a lot of emotional distraught. Not only for the characters on Heartland, but for the fans of the show as well. And so it's a very delicate journey on the writer's part 
because they don't want Amy just moving on and jumping into a new life and that sort of thing too. But it's also that fine line of this is a television show. This is a drama. We still need, there still stuff needs to, to be stuff <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise it's, it's kind of boring. Yeah. So I think what we really wanted to focus on was Amy's journey as a mom because that was, is her most important thing in life and being able to balance what she loves, which is working with horses and having her daughter involved in that too. So we have some really, um, some moments that I'm really proud of so far that we actually just shot last week that have Amy and Lindy working with horses. And that's what I always wanted to see for that, those characters because we never really got to see Amy's past growing up with Marion. And, uh, but, right. but really that's what Marion would be doing with Amy, right from, you know, a young kid, mm -hmm. we would have seen, um, Amy in the round pen with Marion and her teaching and, and we hear about it. We hear the stories that Amy always says, well, my mom taught me this or my mom wrote about this and, uh, but we never got to see it. So I think that that's a really unique opportunity this season is to be able to show Amy as a mom in that same role as Marion mm -hmm. was and bringing what she loves, her passion, her gifts, her anything to do with what her whole being is and pass that down to her daughter. I love that. Are there any flashbacks so, to Marion? Like, Oh, no, no, <laughs> but that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Hey, it's yeah. And I think a series that goes on this many years, flashbacks can be hard to have a continuity with because mm. if you're oh, reshooting yeah, yeah, yeah. a flashback, you have to be consistent with the actress who played Marion, but then to find someone who looks like that actress early on. And then same with young Amy Every year, if we did flashbacks of young Amy at seven, well, the actress that's going to play young Amy is going to be getting older every yeah. year. So it can be a challenge. Um, but I just love, I love how enthusiastic the twins are. So the twins, Ruby and Emanuela, who play Lindy, they just are eating this up and they love it. Awesome. And I'm that makes me feel really happy because I... It, it just wouldn't be the same experience if they were like, I don't want to do this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but they love the horses. The biggest thing I've been working on with them, because they're not farm kids, they're not horse girls. They come out here and they hang out with my horses, but they get so excited when they see the horses. And anyone who's around horses knows you have to have a very level and calm energy for the horses to be comfortable because they read off your energy. So if you're jumping around and, and screaming and running, yeah. they're, they're not out. comfortable. Yeah. And so I've been really trying to work with Ruby and Emanuela and just say, okay, we need to calm ourselves. We need to be mm. quiet. And it's kind of, it's unique to the show because Amy's teaching Lindy and I'm trying to teach, teach these girls, the girls. <laughs> and it's, it's really cool because I can take that into my character and be like, Oh, so when I approach the situation, I did it this way. And so when Amy's mm -hmm. working with Lindy, I, it's, it's very similar mm -hmm. and it's almost real. It's happening in the moment because if I tell the character of Lindy something, I'm actually telling the girls like, no, we need to be nice and quiet. And because yeah. they might be jumping around and screaming and yelling. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so with kids, it is hard because they have a very just energetic personality. And so to be able to say, you need to be quiet, you need to be relaxed. And they have this year, this incredible little stunt double that has done some work for them. And so I would always say, okay, you know, watch her. She's going to go in and her energy is so calm. She's five years old. Yeah. She walks in there and she just goes, whoa, it's okay. And like, <laughs> she just like quietly <laughs> walks up and the girls, they'll run in there and like, yeah. Uh, right, 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 right. run 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 and I'm like no we need to be quiet watch your stunt double yeah exactly <laughs> so that that was actually a nice learning tool because they can see this young girl who's the same age as them going in and, mm -hmm. and doing all of these things that their character would be doing awesome uh, so that's been really fun so as far as a season journey I still don't know what's going to happen the okay. whole season okay so I actually can't give anything away okay okay <laughs> I've read the first six scripts um so I kind of know there's an interesting um uh exotic animal that's kind of an elephant like oh an elephant no is oh. that horse like well kind of a horse like it's got four legs <laughs> That is true. <laughs> so a dog is horse leg. -like, cat is horse leg. -like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would love an elephant, but they don't have elephants in Canada. We don't have elephants, do we? I'm just going to take a deep breath. Do we? We don't have elephants. Have you ever been to the Calgary Zoo? Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. But like not natural elephants. Oh, Can't wow. Can't get natural elephants. I don't even know what to <laughs> say right now. No, I know. We're just going to pretend that that <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> What was I thinking about? Well, you yeah, need to no. spend some more time out here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Go for a walk. See the elephants grazing. 
<laughs> I guess in my mind, I was thinking like, like yeah, zoo, but like you couldn't. Saskatchewan has native elephants roaming the prairies. <laughs> I was thinking like you can't get. Could you get animals from a zoo on the show? Yeah, I'm sure we could. The thing is, is. You know, we try to promote an environment that is always bettering the animal's life, too. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know how I would feel about... Unless we were going to the zoo and just filming them in the zoo. That's kind of what I was... Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It was like, I know that there's zoos and stuff, but we couldn't... You couldn't take the elephants out of the zoo and put them in, like, a scene and be like, oh, there's a problem with this elephant that's being Mm -hmm. in a (laughs) storyline. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe I didn't think that question through too much, okay? It's okay, it's good. It happens sometimes. But there is <laughs> there is some, uh, a unique animal that I know of. There's also, okay. the writers always try to pull stories from the world around us. So, you know, if there's a, a story that happens that they think is unique and they want to bring into the story, then they'll do the research on that. So yeah. we know that there has been some strange weather patterns in I'd, all over the world, really, but yeah. in in Canada, in the last couple of years, there's been fires, there's been floods, there's been all these types of things. So, there is a natural disaster that happens that's going to be quite oh. intense, and the whole town has to come together. And um, and Lou is still mayor, so she has to figure out how to structure to, everything, to f- work yeah, it out, figure it out. Um, and so, and, and just some behind the scenes stuff. Everyone knows that Michelle Morgan is about to have a baby. And so it was, it was one of those things where planning and scheduling mm. is very difficult when it comes to, because Lou is not pregnant in the show. Oh, you got to shoot so around it. We've done this before back in season three, four, five. <laughs> season seven one of the seasons of heartland <laughs> sometime in the Lu- past lou was pregnant uh or sorry michelle was pregnant lou was not pregnant and yeah. so it was it was done with large fruit bowls in the foreground and things like that yeah. so um we've done something similar this year and then we've also given her a few episodes off of course to have her child, child and yeah. um take some time off so it's it's always hard we never really think about from the writer's perspective of having to deal with all these different challenges right when when we look at a show we're just like oh why did they do that or why is that character gone yeah, yeah, or yeah. why there's so much there's, behind the scenes there's so <laughs> many things that are involved that yeah. the writers so the writers may have done a, a beautiful arc for the season for the character of Lou and then they go okay now Michelle's pregnant so we need to give her a couple months off we need to do this how can we do that yeah so that's why things happen sometimes in television series that just confuse people yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's it's just that way of dealing with There's so with many moving pieces. There really are. And like sometimes for the people that don't know behind the scenes there's many many people scheduling and mm-hmm. planning and then adjusting when an actor mm-hmm. can't make it or they're sick or Cuz there's also actors on other projects. And other projects. And yeah. so and they're not I mean I'm the only local person to this area. So we're flying actors in and out all the time but if they book a job in Vancouver or Toronto or or wherever it might be we have to schedule around that. Yeah. So it can be a bit of a challenge. A and bit, that's yeah. why... A bit of a challenge. A bit of a challenge. <laughs> uh, they do it, and they do yeah. a great job of it, but it is always something to think about and, and to mm-hmm. plan for. Is there a premiere date yet for the new season? I, I mean, the fall? I don't even know when it is. I probably should know, but it's typically... Yeah, it is the fall. Typically so the it's fall. typically the end of September, early October. Okay. So I would guess... Yeah, someone there. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put that in the show notes. I'm sure we'll have mm-hmm. some, some more info when this episode comes out. Uh, Amber, you have a store that you've just opened up. Mm-hmm. What was the inspiration behind that? Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. I like to do spontaneous things. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think them through. I just say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it well. And it always works. Yeah. And I think that that's maybe why things work because I don't ever say, how am I going to do this? This is a bad idea. What? None of that stuff. Okay. I just jump in both feet and say, okay, we're going to make this work. What makes it something that you're going to do versus something? Is it a feeling? You're just like, I'm going to do this. Is it circumstance? No. So I'll explain a little bit of the backstory on this. So I've always loved real estate. I like buying and selling properties. Um, I have just always had residential properties and I rent them out. And then when the t- time comes, I want to sell them. Markets go up and down. I decide to do that. So this commercial building came up for sale and I thought, I've never had a commercial building. That's something I'd like to, okay. seems like a natural progression onto my real estate pro- portfolio. Mm. And so I purchased the building with thoughts of the initial um, renters staying in there. It was a diner at the time and they seemed happy and I thought, okay, this is great. I will have the diner continue and I will just be a landlord like I am with my residential buildings. 
And there was a little um, suite, like apartment upstairs that I thought, okay, this is great. I will completely reno this because I kind of, I like winter projects. I like something that I can Get just dive Get your hands dirty with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I went into full reno mode and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll clean this up and that will be my project. So I got that done and it was great. And then the tenants came to me and said, you know, COVID really hurt our business and we can't renew our lease. And I went, oh, okay. So that plan that I had has stopped, yeah. but that doesn't mean I can't rent it out again. So yeah. then I got thinking, okay, well maybe I'll put it up for rent. But in the meantime, I had loved that building so much that I kind of, when I was renovating the upstairs, I was thinking, you know, that basement or that main floor would be such a great store. It's so cute. Mm. It's an old heritage building. Like it's got so much potential. And so as you're doing things, painting walls, whatever, like I'm thinking about it. You're dreaming about it. And it's, that's mm -hmm. the thing, you know, when you start thinking about an idea and at that time I didn't think it was going to happen anytime soon because I figured the current tenants were going to stay in there. So I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh, but you could do this. And as you're painting, you're like, ah, oh, you could do this. And so then I got thinking, well, if I do rent it out to the next commercial tenant, usually a commercial lease is six years plus, right? So it could be six to 12 years or more. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do after Heartland? If Heartland ever ends, what's the plan? And that's when I was renoing and painting. I was like, well, it would be a really cool store and it would be fun to open a store and all that. And so then I finally just said, you know what? Instead of trying to find a new tenant that's going to be in there for a decade possibly, why don't I just jump on it and do it? Mm. They said the only thing that ever holds you back is believing that you can't do something, that you can't follow through. And it does take, it takes time, it takes dedication, and it takes money. And I know that all of those things can be a struggle because mm. not everybody has time, money, and, and just the, the passion to put into it. And so it was just one of those things that I said, well, I have two months until Heartland starts. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's make a store in two months. <laughs> yeah. And so did a full gut of the building. So ripped out all the floor. There was in the front, there's old, um, really old, beautiful hardwood floor. So I had that refinished because I didn't want to rip it out. But I, all the other floor was decaying and rotted and gross. Ripped all that out with help. I didn't do this all yeah, by yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was there every day and I was the general contractor for everything. So if I needed someone to come and refinish the floor, I found someone for that. I did a bit of painting, but then I finally was like, I don't have time to paint this building by myself. So I brought in a painter. Um, we had a friend of ours build these beautiful cabinets, nice. all the shelving, all of the, I tried to enlist a lot of help from my friends because I have a lot of very talented friends yeah. and I thought that's Why the not best use way. Yeah. yeah. And so it was fun. Like we would go in and we would crank the music and we would just be doing different projects, yeah. full reno. In the meantime, while we're doing this, every night I would come home and start ordering products because if the store is opening it. in two months, yeah, you, you don't want to open your doors with nothing on the shelves. So I started just going crazy and uh, <laughs> calling different vendors and figuring out what I wanted. And the approach I took was, I want to bring things into the store that I like. That mm -hmm. I, I don't want to just bring in something because I think someone else will like it. I actually want to believe in every product. I would Great. use every product. And so at first I was like, oh, it's going to be a clothing store. But then it kind of shifted into a general store type thing where there's I always say it's the perfect place to get a gift because I would, any time I saw something I liked and I liked a vendor, I just went for it. It didn't have to be in that box of, well, this isn't clothing or this isn't an accessory. Um, so I've got jams in there. I've got candles. I've got signs and home decor and artwork and, you wow. know, like all that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit of everything. And, uh, and it's been a lot of fun, but it's also been very time consuming. What, w what has been the, the challenges that have come up and what have you learned through this process? Because, you know, for maybe a young woman watching right now that's like, I would love to open a store. I want to start a business, you know, and she's, but I don't know how anything about it. Like, mm -hmm. what advice can you give them and what challenges did you, did you face that you're like, oh, I learned this about myself or mm -hmm. I would share this with somebody else so they wouldn't have to go through this as well? Um, managing people was hard. Um, mm. And I have great great staff, great people in the store. But for me, I'm a very hands-on person. I like to do everything myself. <laughs> and so it's hard for me to give up the reins, so to speak, and say, okay, now you can be in the store and you can be selling things and, and picking things out. And that was the thing too, is I wanted to make sure, because up until this point and going forward, I still will be, I have ordered everything, chosen everything in the store. It's only been me. Mm. And so then I said, okay, well, now I'm back to work full time. I work 12 to 14 hours a day. So when reorders happen and different products come in that my staff wants, I have to let, I have to give up the reins and say, okay, 
you guys can go forward and make that decision. And that has been a challenge for me. And that's not to say that I'm not still involved 100% on those decisions, but I'm now saying, okay, you guys go and you look for new vendors. And if people come to you, you kind of just decide if that's going to fit in the store or not. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I think that's been difficult for me too. I like to take on sometimes more than I can chew. So challenge yourself. Yes, it's not, a bad thing. <laughs> it's not, but you can burn yourself out. Yes. So I think that was a little bit of a challenge with doing all the renos at night, ordering in all the products. And then as soon as Heartland Prep started, I was still balancing all these things. And then I was in meetings and that sort of thing as well. And you're producing Heartland. Yeah. And it's, that's one of the things that I felt, not that I have, I don't want to say I've slacked on any of my responsibilities, but that is the one area this year that I was not as involved. And I think it was okay. I don't feel, I don't regret anything that I did, but since I was so hands-on with the store and everything going here on the farm because I'm also still feeding animals every yeah, day yeah, yeah. and having the fet the vet the fet <laughs> <laughs> having the vet out the farrier out all of these different yeah. people that help me take care of these animals um, so the scripts came out and usually I read them the day I get them I make all my notes I I'm very um, prepared that way I felt this was the one year that I was like I'll get to that <laughs> Right. So I was reading scripts the day before our meetings and I was maybe not making notes that I usually make. But I think it was it was actually a nice change Mm -hmm. because a lot of people came up to me and they said, you don't have any notes. And I was like, no, but I trust you guys to do what you're doing. You know, a lot of my notes were always horse involved or horse related because out of the whole production team, besides the Wranglers, I'm the one who has the horse experience. And so I went to the Wranglers this year and I said, I'm sorry, I I don't have any notes, um, but I trust you guys. And I think it was kind of a nice shift on them because instead of me saying, I'm way too busy, you handle it. I just approached it by saying, I I don't have any notes, but I trust you. I trust you guys to make the right decision. And they kind of looked at me and were like, wow, okay. And they know you too. So they know kind of what you would like and what Mm -hmm. you wouldn't like, right? And that's true as well. So I think sometimes... I do take on too much, but it's really good to sit back and look at what's important, Mm -hmm. what needs my time Mm -hmm. in that moment, because sometimes I can dive in full feet, both feet with Heartland and really tackle the scripts and really make a bunch of notes, but it's also okay if I don't, you know, like there is such a great team there and they have been doing the show for 16 years. Yeah. So it's not, I don't think the show is going to suffer in any way because I didn't put as much input in. So it's been... It's been a good balancing. Yeah. Let's talk about trust because you were talking about that in terms of, you know, trusting people to help you with your business, trusting the people that you work with at Heartland. What is a, what is it crucial for you to be able to trust somebody? Is it a aligned set of values? Is it a shared mm-hmm. vision? I think a shared vision for sure. Yeah. Because I want people that come to the store, I want people to know that it's a good representation of me and my life and what I like. Mm. And so that was the hard part of, of stepping back was I was like, but now I'm not a hundred percent there, but that's okay. You know, I have enough people and the people I chose to be in the store are good friends of mine and people that I know will carry my vision forward. Yep. So I think that is a big thing is to be able to have people you trust that share your vision. Um, and just also just kind of let it go a little bit. And for me, cause people ask me all the time, well, don't you have hired hands at your farm? And don't, and it's not that I don't trust people to come and look after my animals. It's that I feel this is my responsibility. I don't yeah. want people to come in and feed my horses because why do I have them? If I'm not putting in the work, why are they here? Yeah. Cause you develop a relationship that way. Yeah. And there's more of an appreciation I find when you're, when you're cleaning and taking care of your own stuff, mm-hmm. there's like a, you have a connection to it. And if, yeah. if you have too much stuff or, you know, animals or whatever the case may be, um, and you're doing all the work, you're like, oh, this is a lot. Whereas if you mm-hmm. had someone else doing it, you'd be like, whatever, someone else is doing it. So yeah. I don't know if it's, it's too like much. your vehicle. If you do all the work yourself on your vehicle, you appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. If you take it in and get a service done on it, you're like, ah, oh, they did it. It dealt with it. It's fine. Maybe you're going to run into the ground a little more than you would <laughs> if you were the one changing the oil and, right, and doing right, right. all the work on it because you're like, well, I want to make sure that I'm. I'm not just putting in this time for nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think there's more of a respect for what you have if you put the time in. Same with your house. You know, if you, I've always been the one that cleans my house. I've never had a housekeeper because I feel like if someone just came in and cleaned it, 
I mean, it would be great. I'd be like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't have the same appreciation for the space. Mm -hmm. When I clean it, I'm like, this looks great. Like, I, I just did yeah. that. And and so there... But there are things that you get you pay people to do that you may not be good at, mm -hmm. but you value that. That's and you true appreciate too. that. That's what I've been focusing on is like, I may not know how to fix a vehicle or do these certain things, but I know and I watch as best I can because I know how hard it is or mm -hmm. like how interesting it is. And I'm like, I, if I can fully appreciate something, fully value it, I'll never take it for granted. That's true too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know, you don't have to do everything yourself, but if someone else is helping you with it or you're getting something like make sure to take the time to appreciate because in that way you'll never take it for granted. You won't run it into the ground and, mm -hmm. you know, run into all these problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When I think also just the act of, of paying someone to do a service too, you know, it's, it's, you're giving something of yourself up for that service. So yeah. it's not like if it was just happening for free, you might actually, no, that's not true because if someone does something for free for me, I respect it a lot more. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, so yeah. much. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's that idea of, you know, you, you have to value what you have mm -hmm. and take ownership of it and pride of it. And that's why it's, it's nice to put the actual work into something because then you're yeah. like, yeah, I, I did this and I'm proud of this. And I love that. Was there a leap of faith when you went to take your to, to do your store to make create this in the two months that you had was there any doubt in your mind or were you fully like i know i can do this two months we got this i don't know that doubt ever comes into my mind until i'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed and then it's still not doubt it's just like full speed ahead okay so i didn't think that no i couldn't do it or no i couldn't accomplish it i just it was more me understanding the limits of my own body and mind mm. so it was like do I really need to be here every night until two in the morning? Cause I was doing that a lot. Like I was at the store, I'd go to work all day at Heartland when we were in prep and then I would go to the store and I would be there till two, three in the morning. Um, and that's, that's hard on my mind and body. Mm -hmm. It was, and that it wasn't doubt. It was just, I need to, I need to not overwork myself yeah, because I'm just going to burn out. Yeah. Right. And the funny thing out of all of this is every year when I come back to work at Heartland, it takes me a couple weeks to get my mind back into the craft, back into what we do, because I feel like my mind has gone on a vacation a little bit. And s this year, I didn't have that at all. Day one, my mm. mind was as sharp as it's ever been. It was almost like going to work was a break. Like, if that makes sense, like it was, I'd been so busy, so busy, and I've, I'd made this deadline of, okay, we started shooting on June 6th. June 6th, I have to put this store aside, and I have to put all of my mind into Heartland. Mm. Day one, I surprisingly knew all of my lines. I didn't have any, like, there was no foggy moments, which I usually have the first week or so, like getting my brain back into it. And you think it's because my brain had been on overdrive the entire yeah. winter <laughs> and it was like ah! yeah so you went to the the regular pace as opposed to overdrive exactly. pace. exactly yeah. and it was just all of a sudden like oh it feels great to be back mm. at work and everything mm. is just so yeah I think that it's it's never about doubt in my mind it's just about can I can my mind and body handle everything mm. I'm taking on mm. do you have a moment in your life recently that you've had to take a leap of faith or there's been a challenge that you've had to trust yourself I think More. every day, you every day, like, <laughs> like really though, it's yeah. about, it's not a, it's not one individual thing that happens. It's just every day you have to wake up and you have to trust yourself to have the best day you can to be as motivated as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not something I ever think about. Like I'm, I don't wake up and be like, okay, I'm going to do this today. It's just something that happens. Like you just, you just do it. And I think for myself, the less I do, the more I question what I'm doing. Ah. When I'm always busy and just full speed ahead, I don't question anything because I don't have time to question it. And that was a lot of, during the pandemic, I know a lot of people, they were questioning a ton of things. And I said, you need to be busier. You know, like you need to just go and do something that fuels you forward because it, I felt like it was just too much in whatever way it was. Mm. You know, if they were thinking about this or they're thinking about that. They were still thinking about it. But they're also busy with things maybe, you were busy with things that you care about. Maybe people mm -hmm. were busy with things that they didn't care about That's and they stopped too. to think about that and be like, maybe these, all these things that I'm busy with, mm -hmm. I don't really want to do. That's true too. You know what I'm saying? Because your lifestyle is very oriented, you know, for you and who you are and your sort of contentment feeling. Mm -hmm. And so for you being busy is like, 
being connected to that always. So you're not worried and thinking, oh, should I do this? Should I not be doing this? Because it's That's aligned true. for you. You know, and I think a lot of people in this these last 18 months have been like, yeah, like, is this the job that I, mm-hmm. I want to be in? Is this a relationship? Or, mm-hmm. you know, the divorce rate, I think, has gone through the roof mm-hmm. over these last 18 months. But um, so, but what you're saying is if you can find, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, if you are aligned with the things that resonate with you, mm-hmm. you don't have to, you, there's no there's no doubt then because it's like they resonate with me. I don't have yeah. to doubt this. I like this. And, it, and you talked about this in the last podcast. You don't have this fear of failure. It's like I, I you keep trying things. Yeah. Because so I think I think failure, and I don't call it that, but not succeeding at something or not doing it the way you thought you were going to do it is not a bad thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people fear failure because they're like, what if I try this and it doesn't work? And in my opinion, that's a great thing. Mm-hmm. If you try it and it doesn't work, it's just telling you to do something else. It's telling you that that's not the direction you're supposed to go in. So even with this store, and I have no idea how this store is going to work out, right? I, I'm still, I mean, we just opened, um, just starting. I don't know if it's going to be a success in terms of what people would think. I mean, it's not like I'm, I've put a, I'm not making any money at it yet, yeah. right? So it's, it's not in what people would think, oh, it's success. Success, in my opinion, is something that is thriving, is making you money, is profitable, is, is something that's doing well. Mm-hmm. And I'm very happy with how the store has turned out. But that doesn't mean that it's a success yet, mm. right? In order for it to actually be working, it needs to be generating a profit. Yep. So, but I'm not, but that doesn't scare me. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I'm at the point where I'm like, this could not be great, yeah. but then I'll know that it wasn't meant to be. And I'll never question, oh, I should have had a store. You know, if I have to close in two years, I have to close in two years. Mm. And that's just something that it just wasn't meant to be. But mm. I've tried it. So then when I'm sitting in a rocking chair at 80, I can be like, I had a store once. <laughs> and it didn't work yeah. out. <laughs> but all your eggs aren't in that one basket either. That's true. Too. Right. So if somebody was sort of like, I want to start a business, you know, like, and they put all their eggs in that basket, mm-hmm. it would be a little different in their circumstance. Whereas yep. you could you could say, hey, this didn't work. We weren't profitable in two years. You know, we can cut our losses. Mm -hmm. But if all your eggs were in one basket, it'd probably be a different story. You know? Yeah. Um, Yeah, because that that can be when you're starting out, you know, a lot of people when they're starting a business, they're they're doing something like that. It's like we're all in, you know, a restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. So lockdowns, different things that happen in the world. uh, It's like, oh, God, like, how are we going to eat? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different. Yeah. But um, I think it's still very interesting and, and a great insight to, um, when you take that approach of just let things evolve and let them show them to you, like, is this going to work? Is this what mm-hmm. is, or is it going to change? We were talking about this yesterday. Um, I think you were saying that Sean didn't think he was going to be doing what he was doing and then things came and changed and you mm-hmm. were like, it's like one step at a time. Yeah. You will see the next step when it's there for you to take. Yeah. But you got to take the one that's right in front of you as best you can. And then the next one will show itself. Well, and that's, that's it. I'm glad you brought that up because I do know people in my life that they're waiting for that perfect thing, mm-hmm. right? And just because they're waiting for that perfect thing, they've missed 20 other things that might have led them to that thing. But you don't just, and I've always been someone who I don't, I don't necessarily go looking for open doors, but when a door opens, I don't close it because I don't like what's behind it, right? So sometimes like I might not, well, even with this store, I honestly did not think I would be opening a store. The, like, <laughs> if you had to ask me at Christmas time if I was opening a store, I'd be like, no. But things happen, and I was like, why don't I try it? Mm. I don't necessarily, that's not what, my dream was never to own a store. That's not, that wasn't even on my radar. Mm-hmm. But it happened. And maybe by doing that, it's going to lead me somewhere else that I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I think that if you're too goal oriented into a specific goal, attached to that, specific, attached yeah. to that specific goal, you lose sight of all the other steps that might be there to push you towards that goal. Absolutely. I, I never thought I'd be writing poetry for people every week. Like, mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> like, um, but I love it and it's great. And it's, it's really, it's flowering into something that I was like, oh, and then now we're doing like monthly, like group chats and we're hanging out with people and they're starting to meet up with e- each other and like, there's all these things that are unfolding that if I was like, oh, I don't want to write poetry for people. Like, that's not what I want to do. That's not what my goal was. Um, then I would shut it down. But I'm like, I feel like I'm being asked to do this. Or there's like a, this is like the next step. So I'll do it and I'll do my very best at it. 
And I think in life, like you just said, like so many people are like, this isn't the goal that I wanted. This isn't the step that I chose. And it's like, man, life has more for you in store than you can ever imagine. But mm -hmm. you got to do the work with what's right in front of you. And it'll give you things you didn't even know you wanted. Yeah. Right? So maybe the store turns into something else and you're like, oh, I didn't even know I wanted this. Mm -hmm. But this is way better. Yeah. We don't know. Well, and that's the thing. I always, from a little kid, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. That was my, right. that was my goal. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, but then I took those little steps. So I, I, st I was like, if this is what I'm going to do, then I'm going to start working at an animal shelter, a wildlife center, a kid's horse camp, all of these different steps that weren't a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. It's not like I said, no, I'm not working at a kid's ki horse camp because I'm going to be a veterinarian. Like I did all these other little steps so that it would propel me towards that dream or mm -hmm. that goal. Then I started working in a vet clinic and it wasn't until I got probably three years under my belt at the vet clinic to realize it's not really what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But you have to go through those steps. You have to go through those steps. Because yeah. if I had just been like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to school now and I go to school for eight years to become a vet. And then I get out and I start working in a clinic and go, this isn't what I want. Yeah. It's, and I'm sure then you go and you you find what else, else you yeah. want but after you've invested eight years of your life and money into vet school it's harder to give that up so i always encourage people too if there's something that you think you want to do try it out yep. in a small scale first before you dive into it so if there's if you think i'm gonna do this or i'm gonna do that try it out i agree take 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 your time with it and um, i always like to tell people tune in or or take a nice long walk in the woods or get in tune with your heart because you very often you'll feel it like in a still mm -hmm. quiet place inside like this doesn't quite feel right for me or I feel like I want to do this but I'm not quite sure how to yet mm -hmm. and I that's where that what I really want to encourage people and that's what this podcast is about is you know the time has come is tuning into yourself what has the time come for in your life and how do you find that that faith and that courage to take the leap of faith and try something maybe that you might fail at you mm -hmm. might you might not do the way what you want it to end up as, right? But like you said, it's just, you just keep trying things and just keep staying in tune with whatever your your passion is or your feeling is of, you know, yours is contentment, um, being aligned with yourself. And then you keep trying things and eventually you will find a door will open. You're like, I never thought about this mm -hmm. before. This is so great. So one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about, Amber, today was uh, your books. You write children's books. <laughs> It's another thing that you started to do. <laughs> so do you yeah. think you'll ever make your children's books into like a little animated show or do you want to stay with the, the, the picture Again, books? I've never thought of that. Like I've never thought of beyond that. Um, for me, one of my favorite courses in school was creative writing. That was like, I loved that class and I loved writing short stories and, and different things like that. And of course I love writing about animals. And I find that through children's books, you can be so animated and you can be, mm -hmm. you can, you can give animals that personality that we might not be able to do in, in a different way. Right. So it's like children's books allow you to personify a cow, horse, sheep, whatever it might be into this, into the feelings that we have for those animals. Mm -hmm. So my first book that I wrote was Weird Cow Go. And it was just this idea of, I always look out and I see my animals and I have a very strange grouping of animals. I have cows out with my horses and then there's alpacas and there's rabbits and they all just kind of roam together. Yeah. And every time I look at them, I also be sitting out in the field and in my mind, I'm creating the conversations that they have where I'm just looking at them and being like, wow, they, they really have a sense of, of family in a very strange, different grouping of animals. And so with the kids' books, it was a way for me to express that and put it onto paper. And it was so much fun. And I, so I have two books out now. And it was just, it was something where I had a different creative outlet. Again, we talk about I like to do projects in the winter that are different from Heartland and keep me kind of creative and keep my mind going. Uh, so those those two books were my, my winter fillers and <laughs> they were so much fun. Are you going to do more? I think so. Yeah. Um, no plans right now. I, again, I've been so busy, busy with everything yeah. that's going on. But um, yeah, for sure in the future. Yeah, I think there's a need for quality kids content. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched like um, the YouTube kids stuff uh, on YouTube sometimes. Sometimes some of it's like really wacky and you're like, what is this? Um so like quality kids content, um, I think would be really cool if you animated your stories where mm -hmm. cow go into an animated show. Well, and showing kids what 
life is like oh, out here. Oh, what life is like on a farm, yeah. Because I think a lot of kids, a lot of children have a disconnect. And I see it with the twins when they come out here too, right? Because they, they grow up in the city. Um, they don't have animals at home. So when I bring my animals to their house or they come here, it's just like this whole new world. Yes. They're like, what? You know, this is amazing. And so I do believe, and for any parents out there, uh, who have the opportunity to take their children to a farm or just somewhere that has animals and experience mm-hmm. that I think is so important because I do believe that children learn so much through animals and just being with them. Yes, watching their behavior. Watching them. Um, mm-hmm. And a big, a big. I'm not going to say issue that I have today, but uh, I was just out for breakfast this morning and there was two different tables, families. All the kids were on iPads at the Mm. table having breakfast and I'm not going to judge because I don't know the situation but to me a lot of children have lost touch with being able to be outside and jumping on a pony or riding a bike or taking a stick and digging up worms or whatever it might be especially during the pandemic because a lot of kids weren't in school they were at home all the time Um, and I'm sure it was very frustrating being a parent and having kids that didn't have these outlets. Maybe their soccer was canceled or all the things that they normally do where they have that outlet. And I feel like in the last year and a half, the, the screen use has become so much more than it was. And I just, I, I worry about that because I think that kids in order to develop and grow and learn, they need to be exploring nature they need Mm -hmm. to be digging up those bugs and that's just it's a part of who we are amen i completely agree with you maybe i know with your you know you got so much time on your hands but maybe you can open like an amber's animal farm and have the kids camps for like oh goodness that would be so (laughs) stressful (laughs) we talk about contentment a bunch of screaming children Children? running around (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. okay maybe not maybe Um, a tv show about it then yes i think (laughs) come explore my farm through the screen (laughs) yeah then then they're watching the screen again okay maybe not okay but i do no i i do agree with that that the kids just need they need outdoor time and being around animals is very calming you know a lot of parents will talk to me about their children that have adhd or different um attention disorders and as soon as they're with horses it all fades away and Mm. they can focus on what that is and by riding a horse or even just brushing a horse it centers them it grounds them Mm -hmm. it it just and i i think that's true with any kid or adult right like it's not this isn't just children if you are having a stressful day, stressful week, there's a time in your life when you're you're just not feeling yourself. Just by spending time with animals, it grounds you. Yeah. And it just brings you back to who you are and, and you remember moment. what's yeah. important. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Thank you, Amber. Um, can we can we talk some of your favorite moments over the past well, it's been sixteen years for you, but fourteen oh. years for me working on the show. Has favorite there been favorite heartland? Yeah, moments? favorite heartland moments. I mean, I think we've had a, we've had many stories together, but it doesn't have to be necessarily Amy and Ty stories. But like, do you have moments that you kind of reflect back on, and uh, and like to think about? You're like, oh wow, because I was walking in High River the other day, and I was walking by Maggie's, and I was like, oh man, I shot that scene with Carrie James. We were going to this, we were doing that, and do you remember when you guys were going in the bathtub down the? That's one of my favorite <laughs> moments. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I was involved, yeah. so but it's one of my favorite <laughs> moments to witness. Um, there's been so many and I think what you just said reminiscing about yeah um, so just the other day I was driving in uh, Ty's old truck and going down right by Caleb's trailer yeah and it just like this flood of all of these memories and past things shot on that road came back to me and it was such a strange because we haven't actually filmed at that Caleb's trailer area or Ty's trailer whoever was living in it at the time now yeah um (laughs) in a very long time and the trailer's no longer there. Oh, it's so, gone. Yeah, well, cuz we haven't shot there for 3 years and it was just a set. It was just a set. It wasn't real, Graham. <laughs> I thought it was somebody that owned it. No, that no, was something we bought and put oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I learned something it's, new today. It's not real. <laughs> so they got rid of it. <laughs> yeah, well, 3 years ago when we weren't filming there anymore, oh, they okay. they moved it off. Cuz if they if we're not renting the space and this is just kind of a general thing to anyone who doesn't know the behind the scenes. For example, the Dude Ranch. So the Dude Ranch, we are still renting, but we rent that specific space from the owners and all of the buildings and the dock and the everything that's there, we put in. Yeah. So when we leave, all that stuff comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's the owner's request to keep it and then it stays. Um, and same with the Heartland Ranch. The Heartland Ranch is not owned by Heartland or CBC. It's owned by a private family. And we built the Heartland House and everything. So mm-hmm. it's... Um, but 
just being able to go back in time on those specific locations that bring back memories. Mm -hmm. Another one is the fishing cabin. Um, that oh, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff that that's the first time Ty got sick and we had to stay at the fishing cabin. And there was like that whole thing with the wild horses coming in. The first time we met Ghost, who's been oh, a very yeah, yeah, yeah. prominent horse figure in the show. Uh, so Sean Johnston and I did a scene there beginning of season 14. Oh gosh, they all run together now. But showing up there, and that was the very first day of filming season 14. And that was the season that Ty died. Ty died. And <laughs> it was... It was such a strange, because I was like, wow, like, there's so many different things that have happened here. And I think mm -hmm. they even showed some flashbacks in that episode mm -hmm. from then. But having my character reminiscing about those times and then myself being like, Also oh, reminiscing about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> and there's some things that you don't really remember until you're in that place. And then you're like, oh, like the, the medicine wheel when it was so cold and we were standing oh. up on that cliff oh. Oh and neither God. of us could feel our faces. And we had this big dramatic <laughs> scene and we we're like yeah. trying to talk and my face is frozen. And, and you're like, how do you have an emotional talk with the, someone? What was the scene about? It was like Ty was no trying to tell Amy now. like he liked her or something. I don't even know. And <laughs> I haven't seen that scene again. Yeah. It's you yeah, know, we watch that episode like again. 15 years ago. But yeah. I just remember when I go back to sp like places like that, I'm like, oh. Yeah, we did that. So much has happened. That. And um, one of the things I was, so I was driving in the vehicle in the scene with Ruby, who plays mm -hmm. Lindy. And I was like, oh, yeah, see that field that there. That's where Ty and Amy did their engagement photo shoot with the. Do you remember when we had the like prop phone and we were taking these right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we were stopped right in front of that field. And her and I were just chatting. And uh, she goes, oh, I just miss Papa. <laughs> And like such like a grown up little human really? in the back seat, and I just said, yeah, that's we did this, and yeah. we had the phone out, we were taking selfies because I thought it'd be fun for her to hear that. Yeah, she's just like, oh, I miss oh, Papa. I miss Papa. <laughs> well, we did a Zoom <laughs> chat or a Skype or FaceTime chat the other day, and I don't think they recognized me at first. They were kind of like, ah, and then they kind of like, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that is him. Okay, uh, I'm gonna still bump into them here while I'm in Alberta. I'd love to go see them say hello hopefully they'll remember me oh they will yeah you think yeah, so oh okay yeah. good <laughs> that'd be fun to see them yeah. um well awesome amber thank you so much um i did want to end with a question about similar to the magic painting um but the reverse so what's a feeling that amber moves away from oh that you that if you feel you're like this is one of the the feelings that you least enjoy feeling or you always it's like oh that is the i do not like that feeling so the opposite of the magic painting a feeling I'm, that you would I'm never i'm gonna say um this is not the right word to use, but clinginess. Oh. If someone, their energy is very um, clingy. Okay. I'm completely, I'm like, nope. And it, with animals, it's not just people, with animals. If I have like a, a neediness. horse. Neediness. Neediness. That's a good, that's a good way of saying other than clinginess. But if I have, here's a great example. Breezy, a dog I had extremely clingy and most people be like she is the most well-behaved dog she's amazing she's always at your side she's always like staring at you like intently yeah and it i never bonded with that dog because i was like why are you why huh. why are, do you have this energy like <laughs> <laughs> relax <laughs> and and one of my really good friends um loved breezy for that reason like mm. she was always like i love how she's just always looking at me with these loving eyes and she just like really cares about me and I'm not saying that I don't like someone who yeah, doesn't yeah, care yeah. about me but they were so much better matched so I said do you want her do you want this dog because she just wants someone who looks at her the way she looks at them and I said I'm not that person I like to know that I can just wander off and be okay mm. and not have someone like chasing me whether it be horse a dog so or whatever you, you value independence I value independence for sure greatly for yeah. sure and so if that that neediness comes in it's kind of like ooh, like yeah I need my independence I can't be and I've noticed that with people in my life I've noticed that with animals in my life as soon as they become too needy or too clingy I'm like I'm sorry I'm not the person to offer that for you mm. so with if it's a dog but that doesn't mean you're not compassionate or loving no yeah I wouldn't just, say that yeah not at all it's just like when that it's like that over attachment or that like mm -hmm. sort of like uh, dependency. Yeah, is dependency. Is it, maybe it's dependency. That's what it is. And I don't know why. Like, I've always been like that. And I don't know I don't know where it stems from. Because my mom's a very loving, loving woman. And she's... Um, but she also gives me my space. It's not mm -hmm. like she's overly needy. But I find that people in my life, I will always just kind of move away from. Mm -hmm. If they're too... Like, my friend group right now, 
they're amazing. And they'll be like, hey, we get it. Hang out whenever you want to hang out. Don't whenever you don't. We won't take it personally. personally yeah. Like, it's totally cool. And I've moved away from people in my life, like friends who are like, I need to see you. Where are you? I mm. need to I need to be there. I'm just like, mm. <laughs> no. Like, when the time's right and you want to come hang out, come hang out. Mm. But I don't want to feel like your life is going to be lessened if we don't hang out. I think that speaks to a valuing of someone's own journey of like, you need to get in touch with yourself and be okay with, with yourself. And if you're not content mm -hmm. within yourself and you need somebody else to feel happy or to feel, you know, a part of a thing, yeah. then that, that neediness creeps in. And it's like, I think that's a, personally, I think that's a very healthy thing to be like boundaries, like, Hey, you got to be okay with just being yourself and like yeah. happy with what you're doing. And if we're going to hang out, great. It's like a, it's like a bonus. I, you don't, we don't need to hang out for you to feel contentment or good or, mm -hmm. or these things. You know, you, it comes from within first. Yeah. I like that. I think that's really good. Um, and very often we get uh, attached to and needy to approval, social media, friends, activities, um, you know, job titles, whatever the, you know, situation is. There's lots of things that we use or society uses for that validation or that sort of like, okay, I'm okay. And I'm glad you brought up you know? social media because that's when I find I distance myself from social media is when people are saying, I need you to post. Why haven't you posted? It mm. makes me not want to post because I'm like, mm. nah, I'm good. Like I post because I enjoy it. I post because I see something that I want to share with people. I don't post because I feel like I have to or, you know, it's just and I. I just, and I have been so busy lately that I haven't been as active on social media. So I am seeing it more. And I appreciate when people want content. I do. Because I'm like, you know what? A lot of people don't get to see this surrounding yeah. all the time. And I want to be able to share that. But it's also one of those things where I'm like, okay, I'll share it when I'm ready to share it. Yeah, because it's coming then from an inspired place as opposed to like, I got to post. Mm -hmm. I got to keep my followers up and I got to mm -hmm. keep my and I've, yeah, <laughs> engagement. Yeah, I won't do that. So yeah. it's if I don't feel like posting, I won't post. And yeah. that's a fine line with social media because it is. It's like, but I'm, I'm also not on social media because I'm like, I got to hit this many followers and I got to. And right <laughs> from the beginning, I remember when Craig Robleski actually talked me into Instagram. He's like, you should get Instagram. I oh, said, he was the one. He was the one. Blame him. Yes. Because you talked me into it. Did I? Yep. I didn't even know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He talked me into it. And at the time I was on Facebook and I was like, you know what? It's already really time consuming. I don't mm. want another platform. But then he said, but it's, it's great because you can just post something visual you don't it doesn't have to be about oh yeah like it it's just you can just you don't have to say anything you can just post a just picture a and picture. that a picture mm -hmm. says a thousand words so it's i was like oh yeah that might be fun i love photography like i'll i'll try that out and i've really enjoyed that platform because i find like i've never been a twitter person i've never actually logged on to twitter i have a twitter account yeah, you have a twitter but account. it just generates from my other and i think yeah. people know that um so if you ever comment or do anything on twitter i don't see it <laughs> um <laughs> i just it's not that to me is not a platform i like because that's just people talking and people having as far as i know because i've never actually <laughs> well they put you can post photos too there but it's it is more of like a general town square discussion format mm -hmm. um and I'm not someone. I'm not someone who watches the news. I'm not someone who reads the paper. I'm not someone who f really follows a lot of anything that's going on outside of my yeah. farm. So I don't like those channels. I find that I just want to live my life as I'm living my life, and I don't yeah. necessarily need to know what is happening, or I don't. Maybe I don't want to. I don't no, know. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, for mental health. Sometimes it can be wise to stay away from that stuff. Um, I mean, I try to. I try to like see what's going on but i know i can feel it too when i like watch too much of that stuff or i look at too much like the news wants our attention these social media sites they want your attention so hey what are they going to do and people unconsciously will move into that too they'll post content to get your attention so they'll mm -hmm. find that stuff that gets you angry or fearful or whatever and they'll post that because mm -hmm. it gets more engagement so it's like this unconscious downward cycle that if you get caught in it it just drains your energy and it's not healthy and i think mm -hmm. that's really something we um Everybody knows this already, and, and I think everybody feels this, but it's like, can you take action? Can you notice within yourself when you're starting to be drained by something and snap out of it mm -hmm. and just put it down, go out and play with a duck, mm -hmm. a gamber. You probably play with ducks. I, I know do. you have a duck. Oh, yeah. You have a duck. Yeah. Your duck's awesome. What's your duck's <laughs> name? You have a duck's <laughs> name? You have a name for your duck? Sweet and salty. <laughs> Sweet and salty. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because, you know, you get outside, you get active, you do something different. And it's like, I think what I really love about 
you and your farm and, and the way you live your life is the value system and the priorities that you have is you've got it organized in such a way where your power isn't outside of you. You have contentment within yourself and you have responsibilities and things to do that are aligned with who you are and what you love to do. And you don't get caught up in like, oh, what if people don't, you know, think about this or what do they think about that? Or oh, what if this happens? And what, you know, you've, you've cleansed yourself. So I would assume your mental health is probably great because you don't consume a lot of this content that's online and all these different things out there, which I think is, um, is a challenge we have in our society today. And, and I really hope that we can move away from this and really cleanse ourselves like a, um, the same way we do with diets and we, we cut out the junk food. Mm -hmm. We really need to think of our minds the same way, what we consume. Because social media is a junk food for sure. Yeah. And it, we're consuming it. Mm -hmm. And so all these things together, you know, that, that creates our mental health and we don't really think about it that way. You know, we, we have nutritional things on the side of our food. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to content that we ingest, there's no nutritional information that's, that's like, true. this is full of fat, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, salt or whatever. So that's my metaphor of looking at content the way we consume mentally is if, we, if this was food, would it be nourishing? Would it be stimulating, you know, giving mm -hmm. us energy and making us feel good or dragging us down? So anyways, Amber, thank you so much for being on the show. I love chatting with you. I love being out here in your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. Beautiful scenery. Is there anything else you want to share with people before we wrap up? I don't think so. I think we've covered a lot of great topics and I just feel we all have that clock inside us that reg how can I say this? Um, we all have that inner ability to know what's right and wrong and what feeds us and what doesn't and what makes us feel happy, makes us feel sad. And a lot of people push that away or they don't listen to it because there's conflicting mm. thoughts somewhere else you know someone else in our lives whether it be the news whether it be our significant other our friends whoever are telling us no this is how it should be and especially in the last couple of years I think people were they didn't know how to feel but if you check in with your gut and you mm -hmm. say does this feel right to me go with that Mm -hmm. Because that's staying true to who you are. And I think that's the most important thing. Whether it's right or wrong, you need to know how you feel about something. Amen. I love this, Amber. Thank you for saying that because I think that is the most important thing. And you might, it's not like, oh, this is what I want to do or this is what I feel is right. And then you don't have to ch check in anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a constant checking oh, yeah. in. Every because day, things every, change. Everything. Yeah. And it's, it's not just, there's so much going on in the world right now. And I think that a lot of times it's easier for us just to say, tell me what to think. Mm -hmm. What should I think about this? Mm -hmm. As opposed to actually internalizing it and saying, how do I feel about this? Mm -hmm. Is this? Does this give me a good feeling or do I have the little hairs on the back of my neck standing up? And do you have the courage to honor what mm -hmm. you're feeling and not well, dismiss and it? And I think that finding people that are like-minded make it so much easier. Because mm -hmm. I do know people that they thought a certain way during the pandemic but everybody else around them, their family, their friends, thought a different way. So it was really hard for them because they felt like, well, how can I express who I really am or how I really feel when everyone else around me disagrees? Mm -hmm. So it's also finding those people in your life that resonate with what you're feeling because then you can, you can open up more and you yeah. can say, yeah, I'm feeling that way too. Are you feeling that way? Me too. Yeah. As opposed to just shutting down and being like, I don't want to speak my mind because nobody's going to agree with me. And that's a, that's not a nice feeling. So I was telling my sister, she lives up in Montreal. And I said, you got to find people that, uh, you know, are on the same page with you, that just vibe with you. And regardless of what's going on in terms of the world, but like in life too, yeah. you want to find people like you love living on a farm and being around animals. It's mm -hmm. like, you want to find people that resonate with you and you can still learn from and they have different perspectives and whatnot. But you want to find those people to support you, especially uh, in the situation in the world right now, because if you are isolated like that, you're the only one, it'd be very hard to be true to yourself mm -hmm. and have integrity when your family or your friends are all like, you know, you're crazy or you shouldn't think that way or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so tuning into yourself, checking yourself continuously, I think is um, you'll feel better. You'll have more integrity with yourself. You'll be able to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. and um and to trust yourself and have that faith to honor yourself because you will never regret honoring yourself and having faith and having integrity with yourself but you will regret if you shut it down and you say oh whatever like everybody else thinks this way so i guess i will too mm -hmm. you know so um beautiful amber 
Thanks for being Coming a friend. <laughs> What's that? There's a song. Thanks for being a friend. I don't think it goes like it that. It does like that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us for another episode of The Time Has Come. We'll see you all next time. Well, that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your support. This podcast has been a labor of love for me. I love doing it. And it means a lot to me that you're here, that you're supporting my work, and you're enjoying it as well. So thank you for your comments, your support, your financial donations. It's all fantastic, and I am so, so grateful. I want to say a special thank you to Amber Marshall for being on the podcast once again. Thank you, Amber. That was a lot of fun chatting with you, getting to know you better, and hanging out on your farm, your place of peace, your place of contentment. I really appreciate you, and it's been a great 16 years of friendship. We've known each other for a long time now, and I always learn something from you, so thank you again for being on the show. Carrie James, my friend, you're the best, man. You make this show possible. You've helped me get to the next level with this podcast, so I want to thank Carrie James for all his help and support in making the show happen and getting it out to you all. Thank you, sir. I want to thank Eskimotion for the use of his music. I use his song called In Dreams at the beginning and the end now to just kind of set the tone for everybody, get them in the zone. I also want to thank everyone who has already jumped on my new platform, www.timehascome.com. That's my new network, my new Time Has Come network. I've been spending a lot of time building it for you all, and I appreciate all of you who have already jumped on and are chatting with each other and sharing information and sharing posts and comments. It's great. I really wanted to build this for everybody because I found that there was a community that was rising up, that they were meeting each other in person from different parts of the world. They were driving or flying to different places to meet each other and to connect. It's been fantastic to watch. And I thought, what can I do to help this, these connections and build this community even more? So I built the Time Has Come Network. And that's what it's all about, is sharing my podcasts and other opportunities and creative endeavors that I have with you all and really creating the space for everybody to get together and hang out in a digital place but my hope is and my goal is that these these digital worlds <laughs> this digital party that i'm building becomes physical that's my focus with the time has come network is to create a place for people to meet each other but really get out enjoy life and encourage each other and have those real face-to-face -face connections and friendships and and experiences because that's what life is about it's not about sitting in front of your computer and staring at a screen <laughs> it's a good tool and it connects us but there's so much more to life. So I appreciate everybody jumping on the Time Has Come Network. If you haven't jumped on there yet, that's okay. The podcast will always be free in audio format on all the major podcast players. You can still check it out there. I still got my social media. But if you do want to jump on the Time Has Come Network, I'll happily have you there and I'll welcome you when you get there. So I just want to thank everybody for joining and for those of you who are just listening to the podcast and enjoying from that position, much love and respect to you as well. That's it, guys. I want to say thank you so much. It is my birthday today. I'm going to go take some time off now and enjoy some sunshine. So blessings to you all. I love you, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>